Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will discuss about properties of Fourier series. In my last video, I have discussed about types of Fourier series. In general, there are three types. First one is exponential Fourier series. Second one is trigonometric Fourier series. And third one is polar Fourier series. Usually we use exponential Fourier series and trigonometric Fourier series. So in this video, I will discuss about properties of Fourier series with respect to exponential Fourier series and trigonometric Fourier series, right? See in exponential Fourier series, if you have signal x of t in time domain, then in terms of frequency domain, Fourier series will be summation where n is ranging from minus infinite to plus infinite a of n into e to the power j n omega naught t. Here one thing that you need to understand so precisely, See this a of n, that is Fourier series coefficient. And that describes what? That describes magnitude of frequency component. And n into omega naught, that explains you frequency of given spectrum. n into omega naught, that explains what? That explains frequency of spectrum, right? So here we have a spectrum and frequency of given spectrum that is described by n into omega naught. And for given particular frequency, what is the magnitude that is described by A of n, right? Now let me discuss about first property that is linearity property. One should know Fourier series follows linearity. If you have two signals, x1 of t and x2 of t, then with x1 of t, we have Fourier series that is fn1 and with x2 of t, we have Fourier series that is fn2. Then in linearity, one should know if you have signal a1 x1 of t plus a2 x2 of t, then Fourier series will be a1 fn1 plus a2 fn2. Why? The reason is Fourier series follows linearity and that one can understand based on this algebraic sum, right? See, if you multiply constant a1 with x1 of t, then Fourier series will be a1 into fn1. Plus, if you multiply constant a2 with x2 of t, then Fourier series will be a2 into fn2. So here there is algebraic sum that is followed over here as per linearity that one can understand based on this equation itself, right? So one should know Fourier series follows linearity, right? See, second property that is time shifting property. If you have signal x of t and it is having Fourier series f of n, then after time shifting, here we have signal x of t minus t naught. So we are shifting time t as per t minus t naught. So after Fourier series, here along with f of n, we will be multiplying e to the power minus j n omega naught t. Now let me explain how. See here with Fourier series equation, if you replace t by t minus t naught, then here we will be having t minus t naught. So what we are doing? We are multiplying e to the power minus j n omega naught t naught, right? Over here, in power, instead of t, we have t minus t naught. So but obviously here along with f of n, we need to multiply e to the power minus j n omega naught t naught, right? So that is how time shifting property is there. Now let me talk about second property that is frequency shifting property. See if you have signal x of t and if you want frequency shifting, then first of all you need to understand how frequency is represented. See frequency is represented as per n omega naught. That is normal frequency, right? That is the frequency that is associated with x of t. Now if you want frequency shift, then along with x of t, you will have to multiply e to the power j n naught omega naught t. If you multiply this, then in Fourier series, there will be frequency shift as per f of n minus n naught. So instead of f of n, now frequency is having shifting that is n minus n naught. Here you need to be careful. See here e to the power positive j n naught omega naught t that we are multiplying along with x of t. At that time here n minus n naught is there. If you want n plus n naught, then along with x of t, you will have to multiply e to the power minus j n naught omega naught t, right? 
so that is how one can have frequency shift right now let me talk about next property that is time scaling property see in time scaling property we will be scaling time of signal like original signal is x of t and time scaled signal is x of a t so what will happen if you provide time scaling see fourier series will remain as it is but in terms of number of frequency components there will be change let me explain how see if you have one signal x of t and for this let us consider right now here we are having fourier series component that is having 1000 components right 1000 frequency components are there and that frequency is ranging from 0 to 1 kilo let us consider that now if you scale time over here if you scale time by 10 like now instead of x of t instead of x of t now let us consider we have x of 10 t then what will happen then here in terms of frequency in terms of Fourier series Fourier series will be as it is only difference is instead of 1000 sample now there will be 1000 into 10 means 10,000 samples with same frequency range right so that will be possible as per this algebraic sum where e to the power j n omega t divided by a will be there if you divide it by a then here frequency components that will increase right so that is how things are there otherwise Fourier series will remain as it is it will not change only number of samples will increase right now let me talk about next property that is multiplication and convolution property here there is one thing that you need to understand always remember this see there are two ways of representation of signal one is time domain and second is frequency domain as and when you convert signal from time domain to frequency domain and frequency domain to time domain at that time multiplication is converted into convolution and convolution is converted into multiplication like if you have laplace transform if you have z transform if you have fourier transform if you have fourier series then it follows multiplication convolution properties like if you have multiplication of two signals then in frequency domain there will be convolution and if you have convolution in time domain then in frequency domain there will be multiplication here in Fre fourier series you can observe we have convolution of two signals then after fourier series here fourier series coefficients that is getting multiplied over here right and here as if there is a multiplication in time domain then fourier series coefficient that will be having convolution over here so that is how things are there the reason is fourier series explains what it explains conversion of given time domain signal into frequency domain and Fourier series is applicable to only periodic signal right now let me discuss about next property that is based on differentiation property if you have signal x of t and if you differentiate that signal after that if you observe the Fourier series then in Fourier series Fourier series coefficient that is getting multiplied by j n omega naught now question is why we are multiplying j n omega naught along with Fourier series coefficient the reason is here x of t in Fourier series is having e to the power j n omega naught t if you differentiate e to the power j n omega naught t with respect to time then differentiation will be j n omega naught into e to the power j n omega naught t so after differentiation along with Fourier series coefficient we need to multiply j n omega naught right and if you have integration then what you need to do in integration Fourier series coefficient that should be divided by j n omega naught right that is how integration and differentiation properties are there with Fourier series now let me discuss about symmetry property and symmetry property is having two categories odd and e1 to explain that now let me explain that by writing equations over here see in symmetry there can be e1 function or e1 symmetry or there can be odd function or odd symmetry see in case of e1 symmetry 
you need to observe one thing see in even symmetry fourier coefficient will be real if you talk about exponential fourier series and with odd symmetry fourier series coefficient will be imaginary if you talk about exponential fourier series and if you have even component in that case you will be observing conjugate of an that will be an see with exponential fourier series conjugate of an that will be an in case of even function let me explain why see usually we have a function that is a is equals to b plus jc right here this b that is real and this c that is imaginary right and if you perform conjugate if i say conjugate of a is there then what is that that will be b minus jc with this b we have real value and with this c we have imaginary value right now if you observe even function see even function that is having real value only with fourier coefficient if you have only real value then after conjugate of fourier series coefficient after conjugate of fourier series coefficient we have b only right means a star of n is equals to n means conjugate of a n is a n only while with odd function we have fourier series coefficient that is imaginary and as it is imaginary conjugate will be negative of a n like you can observe if you have only imaginary component like a is having j c so after conjugate we have minus j c so you can say conjugate of a n is equals to minus a n with odd function right one more thing that you need to note down see with even function if you talk about trigonometric fourier series then with trigonometric fourier series we have only cosine terms and with cosine terms only bn is equals to 0 that we have so i have explained the equation in my last video see with trigonometric fourier series here we have cosine term and as we have only cosine terms bn is equals to 0 right while in case of odd symmetry in case of odd function we have only sine terms and for only sine terms a n and a 0 that will be 0 so for odd function we have only sine terms and to have only sine terms this a 0 and a n that will be 0 right so that is how even and odd symmetry is there with respect to exponential fourier series and trigonometric fourier series right so if you have even symmetry if you have even symmetry then for even symmetry in case of exponential fourier series one should know conjugate of an is equals to an that is regarding fourier series coefficient and for odd symmetry conjugate of an will be minus an in case of odd symmetry that is regarding exponential fourier series but in case of trigonometric fourier series one should know even function that is having only cosine term right and that one can understand based on cos signal even like if you plot cos signal then in cos signal you will be observing signal will be appearing like this let me plot it see signal will be appearing like this right so see this cosine term that is having even symmetry this is even signal right so for even function we have only cosine terms right and if you talk about sine terms then sine signal that is appearing somewhat like this you can observe right it is appearing somewhat like this so this is what this is what sine signal that we have and that is having odd symmetry this is even symmetry so this is odd symmetry and this is even symmetry so even symmetry that is having cosine term right and odd symmetry that is having sine term only so that is happening as per shape of sine and cosine that also one can say and in terms of exponential fourier series one should know conjugate of an that will be an 
for e1 function and conjugate of an is equals to minus an for odd function. I hope you have enjoyed this. Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.